Okay, using the metric system in terms of weight and capacity. So essentially weight is talking about a solid object and capacity is talking specifically about liquids. The ideas behind these are the same ideas that we had when you were to look at length and area in terms of the metric system. In that, you are looking at a conversion factor. Um, here, your base unit of measure for weight is going to be in grams. So when we're thinking about um, your chart in terms of your prefixes, grams right here in the middle is your starting place. And so as you can see, as we go up, we have um, the different presets. So again, here's the milli. So when you thought about length, it would have been millimeter. Here, because this is weight, it's milligram. Notice centigram, decigram. Then we have decagram, hectogram, kilogram. Um, the new one that we have here is a metric ton. Okay. But in terms of the rest, notice it is the exact same um, layout that would be used if we were doing length or area. Now, one thing that's important to uh, note is that when we're talking about a metric ton, not only are we talking about a thousand kilograms, but we are also talking about 2,200 pounds. Okay. Now with that, we have to use just the same basic idea in order to convert from one to another. So in other words, we can either move our decimal place depending on what we're doing, or we can actually do the math. Okay. So here, I want to go from 9403 grams to kilograms. So if I look, grams is here in the middle. If I wanted to just simply move my decimal place, one of the things that I would do is I would turn my page sideways like this because this is going to tell me that in order to get from gram down here to kilogram, I have to move one, two, three spaces um, towards the left, meaning my number gets smaller. Okay. So here, that tells me a kilogram is larger than a gram. And so if we were to do that, we would take your little decimal. So that decimal point right now sits right here. And we would move it one, two, three spaces to the left. Thus giving us 9.403 kilograms. Now that being said, we can also do it mathematically. Mathematically says we're going to start with what we have, 9403 grams, and we have to use the conversion factor. So here we would use the fact that we have 1,000 grams per kilogram. So kilogram goes on top, my 1,000 grams is on the bottom. Again, the idea behind that is so that your units would cancel. Thus leaving me with the 9403 divided by a thousand kilograms, thus 9.403. Now, here I have centigram. Okay, so centigram is right up here, and I want to convert that to a milligram. So again, if I want to go from centigram to milligram, I have to move one decimal place to the right. And so here I would take my decimal place that I see, which is right here, and I would move it once to the right, thus giving me 0 0.025 milligrams. Now the other way that again we could do that is we could use the idea of the math. So we have 0 0.0025 centigrams. My conversion factor says I have to go from centigrams to grams. So here I've got 0 0.01 grams per centigram. And then take that into my milligrams. So I would have a milligram 
is 0 0.001 grams. So again, if you pay attention or look at the units, my centigrams goes away, my grams goes away, and leaves me with just the multiplication, thus giving me 0 0.025. Now, last, what if I want to go from 42 kilograms into a metric ton? Again, we could look at how we have to shift, or we can um, use the idea that I have 42 kilograms, and I know that one ton is the same as a thousand kilograms. So in doing that, my kilograms here is going to disappear, leaves behind just my ton, so this is going to give me 42 over a thousand uh, tons. And when I do that, you end up with 0 0.042 tons. Now, we do have some other equi um, equivalent measures of mass, so one thing that you could do is you could take a screenshot here and use this kind of as uh, reference or notes, but notice it's very similar to this original up here. The only difference is here we've kind of reversed it. We're looking at one gram as being a base and then how many milligrams was in one. Okay, so. Um, it's just another idea to look at your uh, units of measure. However you choose to use them is completely up to you. Now, when we talk about capacity, in this case we are talking about liters. Okay, so metric units of liquid, we're talking about liters. Now, one really big important thing that we need to remember is that when we're talking about a milliliter we have other units that can work. So one milliliter is the same as a centimeter cubed is the same as a cc. Okay now those might be used say um, milliliters is more of a science idea Whereas centimeters cubed, obviously, is going to be more towards volume, so we're talking more architecture um, or engineering. Whereas a cc is talking more about the medical field. Um, and so that uh, this just exists, you need to remember it. Now, just like with grams and um, with meters, you have the same milliliter, hectoliter, kiloliter. Um, idea that we had before. So solving them or converting is going to be exactly the same as what we just did with weight, only instead of grams, now we have uh, liters that we're working with. So I have 0.816 milliliters. So again, I can convert that 0 0.816 milliliters. And I know that for every liter, I have a thousand milliliters. My milliliters are going to cancel. This is going to leave me with 0 0.816 divided by a thousand liters. It's going to give me 0 0.000816 liters. Now this other one, I want to go from liters to centimeter cubed. So here we have to recall that one centimeter cubed is the same as one milliliter. So here I've got 99.6 liters. I know that a thousand milliliters, so a thousand centimeters cubed per liter exists my liters are going to go away, leaves me with 99.6 times 1,000 centimeters cubed. 
So when I do that, I get 996 or 99,600 centimeters cubed. All right, just like with everything else, we also can apply um, capacity or weight conversions to word problems. So here we've got how many 5 milliliter doses of liquid medication can be given from a vial containing 3 deciliters. So I have 3 deciliters and in order to figure out how many 5 milliliter doses I have, I have to be able to convert my deciliters to my milliliters. So here I know that there's going to be 100 milliliters to a deciliter. And then of that, I have 5 milliliter doses. Now, where are we getting this idea of 100 milliliters to deciliter? Well, if we go back to look at our weights, Okay, and so again, let me flip this on its side. Now, pretend instead of gram, this said liter. So a deciliter right here would be DL, and I want milliliter. So here I have DL to a milliliter, means I have to move um, two spaces essentially to the right. And so here, if you think about it, uh, one, it's got to be. Um, 100. Okay, so when we're talking about one deciliter, we'd be talking about 100 um, milliliters, and it's just based on where it falls in your um, in your order. I guess it's a good way to put it. So all of it is interrelated. It all goes back from one to another, and essentially, you just have to remember the only thing that changes is that base unit. So here, my deciliters will go away, my milliliters will go away, and this is going to leave me with the number of doses. So I'm going to have 3 times 100 divided by 5 doses. And in this case, this gives you 60 doses out of that vial. Alright, so the next one says that Thomas cleans up after a chemistry lab and part of his job is to empty all of the beakers into a bucket so that they can be removed for proper disposal. The bucket holds four liters. There are five beakers, each containing 50 centiliters of solution, three beakers with 200 milliliters of solution, and two beakers with three deciliters of solution. Will Thomas be able to t dispose of all the leftover solution using just one bucket? Why or why not? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to convert all of your information. So we are told that the bucket holds four liters, and then we have all this information, okay, right here in the smack dab middle of the problem. So we have five beakers that contain 50 centiliters. So I have to take my 50 centiliters and I need to convert that over to liters. So I have 0 0.01 liters per centiliter. So this is going to give me 0 0.5 liters. I then have um, 200 milliliters. So again, I have a liter per a thousand milliliters. So this is going to give me 0 0.2 liters of solution. And then, last but not least, I have um, three deciliters. So 0 0.1 liters per deciliter. So this is going to give me 0 0.3 liters of solution. 
So now what I have to do is I have to actually calculate my total solution. So I have five beakers containing my first. So I've got five beakers containing 0 0.5 liters. I have to add it to the next. I have three beakers containing the 0 0.2 liters of solution. And I have two beakers containing 0 0.3 liters of solution. Add them all together and we come out with a total of 3.7 liters um, of solution. So the question that we were asked is will the bucket hold all of the solution? And so the answer here is yes. The one bucket is big enough. And why? Well, it's because that bucket is actually able to hold four liters and we only have 3.7. So do make sure when you're working these problems that you actually answer the question asked. You don't just stop after you have done a little bit of solving. Now the last one says one cup of flour is approximately 120 grams. How many cups of flour uh, can you get out of a bag of flour weighing 2.4 kilograms? So I have 2.4 kilograms and I need to convert that essentially over to um, cups and I've already said that one cup of flour is 120 grams. So I know that I have a thousand grams per kilogram and I know that one cup has 120 grams in it. So sometimes your conversion is not going to come from the conversion chart, but it's going to come from the problem itself. So my kilograms goes away, my grams goes away, and this leaves me with the 2.4 times 1,000 divided by 120, and this is going to give me cups. So my total cups here is 20 cups of flour. So there, that is everything that you would need to know to get started about doing metric conversions between weight and capacity. So if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.